Hi everyone, the next topic is smoothing splines. So last time we studied regression splines, but we are going to use smoothing splines. So the idea is that the determining the knot points are not really easy. So the, instead of choosing knot points, we use many knot points. Actually, the, we use all observations, the x coordinate of observations as knot points. But we impose penalty if the curve is too complicated. So the smoothing spline is determined so that the, this loss function is minimized. So the first part is basically the error term, so the sum of squared errors. So it's the same as linear regression. So second term, integral the g double prime of t, so this is the second derivative of t, the square. So second derivative represents smoothness usually. So we integrate over all t, so this is the overall smoothness of the curve. So we penalize if the smooth, so the higher the value is, the, the less smooth the function is. So we penalize this term by multiplying by some constant lambda. So lambda is a hyperparameter or a tuning parameter, so we have to optimize it in some way, such as cross-validation. But okay, so lambda is constant for now, and the just we want to minimize this, then we don't have to choose the knot points. So that is the idea of smoothing, smoothing spline. Okay, so one question, the effective degrees of freedom. So usually the degrees of freedom, df, the number of parameters in the model is a measure of model complexity. And, but the smoothing spline, the, since the, we have many knot points, uh, we are not exactly sure what's the um, measure of flexibility or measure of complexity. So it's basically determined by lambda, but what's the re relationship between lambda and the df? And actually, uh, there is a way to calculate the effective degrees of freedom. So using um, this lambda, that we can um, indirectly calculate some quantity which is almost equivalent to df. So um, this equivalent is not really mathematical uh, equivalence, equivalence, but the, the, we have some reasons to believe that it's similar to df. Okay, so the idea is this. So smoothing spline is still the regression model. So we basically make some weighted average of um, observed the um, response, y1 to yn. So, um, so think about the, just the fitted value, y1 hat to yn hat. So this is some um, linear transformation of y1 to yn. Okay. So um, we can write this as the g prime lambda is equal to s lambda times y, where s lambda is n by n coefficient matrix, and uh, this y is original observations. Yeah. Then the, we can define the effective degrees of freedom as df sub lambda is equal to summation of s lambda ii. So this is the diagonal term, uh, diagonal, the, um, diagonal terms of this matrix s sub lambda. So why this corresponds to degrees of freedom? So um, we think about just two extreme case. So if we use the too much information of yi itself to determine yi hat, then fitted curve is ad hoc. Right, because uh, suppose we have y1 to y100, okay, so and y1, so maybe x1 is close to x2 or x3. Then, if we take the information of y1, y2, y3, for example, the average of y1 and y2 and y3, that isn't really ad hoc, but if we entirely use, for example, 99% weight on y1 and 1% weight on y2. Uh, of course, the um, you know error is smaller, but almost the, um, we made the curve ad hoc. So um, the fit is very good, but the um, uh, it's really the complicated curve it makes. 
So in this case, the degrees of freedom should be large. So if the diagonal terms are large, then the curve is ad hoc. So the degrees of freedom is large and the curve is complex. So think about the other way. So the, on the other hand, suppose we define yi hat is equal to y bar, the average of all observations. Then basically this is the same as we fit the model y is equal to beta naught. So regardless of xi that we the estimate the y as the constant. Okay. So in this case, the df should be 1 in usual sense, but actually this effective degrees of freedom is also 1, because if y i hat is equal to y bar, so then the coefficient of y i on the right hand side is 1 over n, right? so all diagonal terms are 1 over n. If we add n terms, df is equal to 1. So this makes sense. If the curve is ad hoc, df is high, and the curve is um, really the simple, and the, if we fit y is equal to just constant, then df becomes 1. So um, we can say so this is a similar quantity to degrees of freedom. So now the, uh, we have defined the df for um, smoothing spline. And still, we have to estimate lambda. We have to determine lambda by cross-validation. So um, basically, the best cross-validation is leave one out cross-validation. So it takes time, the computer intensive, but it's best uh, in the sense that, that we maximize the number of observations. So we every time we use most observations and also um, the result doesn't have any variability. So we try the all combinations. So if we have n observations that we run the n different leave one out cross validation. So we don't have any um, um, variability in the result. So leave one out um, cross validation error is defined as this. So RSS lambda. So basically this, this G hat lambda negative I is the fitted curve by smoothing spline with lambda, but ice observation excluded when we fit the curve. Then the yi minus fitted value square, then we take summation over i is equal to 1 to n. So basically we have to fit the regression model n times, so it takes time. But actually for this specific case, we don't really have to fit the model n times. Just that we need usual the fitted curve using all observations and that we adjust this by dividing by 1 minus the s lambda ii. Then um, if we calculate this, actually this is mathematically the same as this. So this only applies for linear regression, so it cannot be applied for more complicated the statistical models, but the, uh, this can be calculated quickly. So this is also called the G um, CV, generalized the cross validation error. So in this way we can determine lambda. So this is just the uh, last slide. So the this, this red curve is smoothing the spline with 16 effective degrees of freedom. So and the next one, the blue one, is the 6.8 degrees of freedom. And this 6.8 is optimized by cross-validation. So blue curve is an optimal curve based on the data. And red curve is basically the two complicated data. We have higher degrees of freedom. And you can see, okay, so this data have a lot of variability, so probably it doesn't make much sense to just the, you know, fluctuate the, a little around this blue curve. So blue curve is smoother and it the, describes the overall the scatter plot. So the blue curve is optimal and red curve is uh, too complicated for this data. Okay, so this is the theory for smoothing spline. So uh, in the next video, the, I will exp explain our implementation. Okay, see you then.